Good morning and welcome back to Strength for Today. This is day four of our series on a centurion's faith. We've seen a radical faith, a raw faith, a reasoned faith. Today we're going to look at a resilient faith. So let's read a few verses from chapter 8 and verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Well, folks, I've got some bad news for you and I've got some good news. Do you want the bad news first? Let's get it over with. The bad news is that faith always has obstacles. When you are in a place where you have to exercise faith, there will always be a valid reason not to. A little voice inside you saying, and we all know that little voice, but what about this? But what about that? And we see that this centurion in Matthew 8 had at least three obstacles to overcome. Firstly, we read in verse 5 that he was a centurion. He was the enemy, folks. Rome was an army of occupation on the land that God had given to Abraham's seed. They were hated by the Jews. Surely this would be an obstacle to this centurion. Surely this Jewish rabbi will not listen to this request from this Roman soldier to heal a servant. Secondly, being a centurion, he was a Gentile. Surely this God of the Jews would not hear the cry of a mere Gentile. Thirdly, he felt he was unworthy. He said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Would Jesus hear the request of someone who was so unworthy? So learn this, first of all, folks, the bad news. We're coming to the good news in a moment. The bad news is that faith always has obstacles. You know it. Every time we come to believe God for something, we face obstacles. There will be 101 reasons, many of them valid, in your mind and, and from other people, of course, they'll put their two cents in as well, that there's no point in exercising your faith. And so many times we don't see mighty things done for God because we simply give up. It's impossible. This is crazy. There's no way this can happen. And we quietly fold up under the weight of these obstacles and the thing that we were believing for, listen, it lies dormant. It lies asleep. And it's waiting for faith to activate it. But I said there was good news. And here it is. The good news is that all through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we have the records that God has so lovingly given us, given us of men and women who when faced with exercising faith and being confronted with the greatest of obstacles, overcame those obstacles and pressed on with faith and saw great and mighty things done for God. Isn't God good to give us these records of faith to build us up, to let us know that even though there are obstacles, that they can be overcome and faith can win through. Now we also have records of many great men and women of God Outside the Bible, there were two, uh, the first two Scottish missionaries that were sent to the New Hebrides Islands in, in South Pacific uh, many years ago. Do you know what happened to them? On day one, think about this for a setback, they were eaten by cannibals on their first day. That's a pretty big setback. As you can imagine, it wasn't too easy to recruit missionaries to replace these two men, as you would imagine, or these two missionaries. But one man, John Patton, he overcame these obstacles that were put in the way. And he said that he would go. Now, other people, as you can imagine, tried to talk him out of it. I wonder would we have tried to talk him out of it? Or would, it, would we have uh, said, go in faith, brother? I wonder what we would have said. And they tried to talk him out of it. But he went regardless to the island of Aniwa, where he ministered for 15 years. And listen, 
almost everyone on the island at one stage, at the end of his ministry or some stage, was eventually converted. Those obstacles that could have stopped him in his tracks, but this man had a resilient faith to press ahead and believe God. And these stories in the Bible and outside the Bible eh, of other faithful men and women are given to us to build up our faith, that we can um, get through those obstacles if we will believe God. What we understand then is this, that faith and resilience or perseverance, they go hand in hand. Many times we're called to look impossibilities right in the eye and yet not give up, but to keep pressing on and believing God no matter how difficult it seems. It's not easy. In fact, it's easier to give up. But as we will see tomorrow, God rewards faith. Maybe you're in that place of looking obstacles in the eye. I want to remind you, of that little course. Have you got any rivers you think are uncrossable? Have you got any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes. That's his speciality. If you are sick, you go to a doctor. If you need a tooth out, you go to a dentist. If you're looking the impossible, listen, God specializes. That's a specialty in things thought impossible. He can do what no other can do. Have we the faith to believe that despite the obstacles? There are things that God has in store. Just as we finish, here's a wee challenge for today. There are things that God has had in store for our lives in the past. Dreams that he gave us, visions for the future, of things that he wanted us to do. They required our faith, but today they're lying dormant. They're asleep. They've been, as it were, deactivated because We gave up on them. God didn't, but we did. There are also prayers that we once used to pray, but we have stopped praying them because they seemed too impossible. And again, they lie dormant. They lay asleep. Here's your challenge. A wonder and my challenge. Will you and I reactivate those dreams, those visions that God had for our uh, our lives, by a resilient faith that overcomes obstacles that Satan would seek to put in your way. I wonder will we start again to pray those prayers that we have given up on praying because they seemed impossible. And will you press on? Will I press on and keep praying through the obstacles? Will we be like that woman who persistently came and knocked at the door of the unjust judge time after time until he eventually gave in to her request? Now, Jesus told this story, be careful, eh, of the unjust judge who gave in because because this woman wearied him with her request. But Jesus didn't tell that story, eh, meaning that that God is the unjust judge. No, he was comparing God to the unjust judge. If this unjust judge gave in because he was tired of her asking, Jesus is saying, how much more? Will your loving Heavenly Father delight to answer when you persist in prayer, when you're resilient in your faith, no matter what obstacles come up against you? Prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. Amen.